Hello. Hey, girl. <laughs> All right, so let's just talk about um, why we decided to create a Back to Basics podcast episode. So I started a vlog. <laughs> it's about a bunch of stuff, um, natural hair care, um, skin care, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I'd go specifically into my natural hair care journey because it's a really long story. So you should definitely check it out, anomaly.com, for that long story so I just wanted to help a few people out talk about some stuff that I um, was struggling with when I was going back natural and then I know you're a hair guru so I said let me link you up so we can do this um, and yeah I just thought it would be a good idea to go through all that stuff Yes, well, thank you for inviting me. I'm actually really excited to do this podcast episode because I get questions all the time with people asking me, what do you do to your hair? How did you get your hair to look like that? You know, I get the same questions day in and day out. So putting out a podcast that people can listen to over and over as many times as they need to is a great idea. Okay, so I met Anna my freshman year of college, and, you know, we were in our little writing class, and I heard this accent, and I was like, hmm. (laughs) I was like, this sounds like my peoples. (laughs) So we befriended each other, and we just built our relationship from there, and um, graduated from the same school at the same time, same graduation ceremony, whoop, whoop, whoop. And now we are here post-grad, you know what I'm saying? And we're on our journey to success. <laughs> so we are collabing for this podcast episode. And I think that, like, doing this with a friend, it's almost like people can, like, see how you really are in real life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus, yeah. like, you know, when you put on for the camera, like, you know, it's a little bit different. So... We gonna get into some natural hair things today. Um, but basically, my hair was chemically straightened, relaxed for a really long time, and it took me a while before I finally decided to go back natural. Yeah, I was. I got a relaxer when I was twelve. So before I even left elementary school, my hair was straight. That's very young. Yeah. Like that's like starting out with no type of love. For your own natural yeah. hair. Mine was seventh grade. Yeah. So much before seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of us are coming back to our natural hair now and embracing mm-hmm. it. And my journey, I was, I for me, I felt like I was kind of like the first person to go natural, like in my surroundings. Mm-hmm. And then after that, everybody else was like, oh, natural, natural, natural. So. Yeah, my, my hairdresser who actually was relaxing my hair, she was like, you don't even need, like, you could just go natural. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> That's I hilarious. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know, like, what is that, what curly hair? I have curly hair? Like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I haven't, yeah. like, because before I got the relaxer, like, my mom used to just always put my hair in braids and pigtails. So I never really knew, you know, natural hair journey, you learn a lot about yourself, about where you come from, about beauty standards and all that. And that has been my natural hair journey. And now I'm here trying to educate other people. So that's what we're going to do today. (laughs) So we're going to talk about 10 things we wish we knew before going natural. So I wrote down 10 things I wish I knew. And Anna also has 10 things that she wishes she knew. So I think... This is just to help other people because when you do go natural, you're just kind of like thrown out there and it's like, what okay, do I do now? So, <laughs> what now? What now? What? <laughs> and I think that's where like a lot of frustration comes with natural hair is just not knowing how to do it. It's not going to be one, two, done. Like my hair looks perfect. It's going to be like, one, two, three, go to sleep next day, hair still wet, oh, these twists still ain't dry, you know what I'm saying? Oh, boom, curls, you know what I'm saying? So, the 10 things I wrote down, 
So the first one is deep conditioning and detangling. Um, I know that I was really harsh on my hair at the beginning of my hair journey, just like ripping through it with combs and all type of stuff, trying to get the knots and kinks out and not really understanding. Like, I didn't even know what slip meant. Like for a conditioner to have good slip is, it, it means for when you apply the conditioner, like it's easy for your hair and your fingers to just slip right through your curls. Basically, it just, you know, Makes your hair slippery. Yes, it makes your hair slippery so that your comb can slip through it and when your finger detangles, your fingers can slip through it as well. Okay, so I had that one too, but then I think the most important one, um, well, not the most important, but one that I certainly did not know about was not trying to comb your hair when it's dry. Yeah, um, because I definitely did that and then... Um, one of my other curl friends did my hair for me and it curled up like this. And I said, how did you get my hair to do that? <laughs> and it was just a whole lot of water. So use water when you're combing out your hair, when you're detangling. And just for general styling. Yeah, I heard like, don't, don't comb through your hair when it's wet. Don't comb through your hair when it's dry. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? But definitely when it's wet and um preferably when there's conditioner in it yeah get your kinks out ahead of time and then let it kink up over the course of a week and then detangle and watch it. um the second thing on my list is the loc and lco method and the loc method stands for leave-in oil cream and the lco is leave-in cream oil so i'm an loc girl i mean a LCO girl, I like to put in my oil last. Um, but yeah, basically it's just a method that you follow. First you put on your leave-in conditioner to hydrate and condition your hair. Then you put on your cream to define and style. And then you put on your oil to lock in moisture and retain moisture throughout the week. So I didn't know anything about those methods. Um, I actually used a lot of YouTube and um, Mahogany Curls was one of those YouTubers that I looked up to who kind of introduced me to like the curly girl method and all the different hair methods of maintaining your hair. Um, I would say my next point would be don't neglect your scalp. Don't forget the oil. Um, massage your scalp with oil, whether it's coconut oil, jojoba oil, black castor oil, Jamaican black castor oil. Um, but don't forget to oil your scalp. Definitely one of mine. Yeah, scalp care is, I mean, that's where your hair comes from is your scalp, so. And especially if you have eczema and you have itchy scalp, like, do not forget to oil your scalp or you will be washing your hair every other day, like, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. If you can't figure out where that itch is coming from, you probably need some oil. <laughs> um, so the third thing I have on my list is length retention. Um, like I said, at the beginning of my natural hair journey, I was just so, I didn't know how to care for it really. So I was definitely like losing, I had a lot of hair loss, um, more shedding than I should have had. It probably wasn't shedding, but more so me like ripping out my hair and thinking, oh, this is just shedding. Everybody sheds. When in reality, I'm like losing strands. So just length retention, um, being gentle on your hair. Um, every strand on your head adds up to the whole conglomerate. So even if you are losing just a little bit of it, it's fine. But if there's an excess amount, you may want to switch up how you're detangling or um, just try and be a little bit more gentle with your hair. Yeah, um, I, I even still suck at my hair sometimes when I'm, <laughs> yeah, when I'm getting frustrated. Yes. But it's hard, but it's important. Yeah, or um, when I'm rushing, like, if I'm like, okay, I'm over wash day, like, come on, I'm ready to be done, I'm just going, but that's bad, we shouldn't do that, but, you know what I'm saying, take your time as much as you can, so, yeah. Um, so, with that, I would say, if you're, if you don't already own a detangling brush, or, like, a Denmon brush, and the whole, uh, white piece comb thing isn't working for you, Definitely try um, a detangling brush. 
can get them at any beauty supply store. Um, they work miracles and they actually form your curls for you. You pull that brush through one time and your curls just ring up. Yeah, that's a good yeah. tip. I'm a um, wide tooth comb type of girl, but I'm surprised I don't have a Demon brush by now, but I don't have one. But I'm going to get one because I've been wanting one for the longest. It just slips my mind every time, you know. <laughs> But yeah. Oh, so the fourth thing on my list is how to tell what products work and what products don't work. Because being a new natural, you're just like, okay, so how do I know if this works? Like people are telling me, find what works for your hair. Oh, you gotta know everybody's hair likes different stuff. It's like, okay, well, how do I know what my hair likes? And you can tell what your hair likes by how your hair absorbs the product. So if you put a product on your hair and your hair absorbs it, your hair likes the product, the product is moisturizing your hair correctly. If you apply a product and it sits on your strands and you can like look at your hair and see it sitting on it, your hair isn't a fan of it and that product probably isn't best for you, your hair type or your hair porosity. So that's how you can tell. Um, there is a period in your natural hair journey where you're just going to be like trying 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 a bunch trying, of stuff trying everything because there's so much out like now like well when I first started my natural hair journey there wasn't that I mean there was stuff out there but there wasn't the brands weren't how they are today let's say that yeah it was so like even Shea Moisture can too yes it was like Shea Moisture can too was like the top two yeah. natural hair brands and now we have so much more mm -hmm. so if you're just now starting um I would say try one brand at a time um definitely find what you like and then once you find what you like then venture out and try different products so have that staple product that you already know that you love and then you know test around and if those don't work come back to your staple you know what I'm saying yeah. so yeah but that's how I tell if my hair likes it if my hair is like dumb dry the next day I'm like oh no this is not the product for me mm -hmm. so just pay attention to your hair on um, how your hair feels if the product is absorbing into your hair or sitting on your strands those all make a difference when picking products for your hair type my next one I would say is deep condition once a week do a hair mask. Holy grail. <laughs> yeah, don't forget. And especially, um, as Ariel was talking about with the length retention, if you want to retain length, if you want your hair to grow, you cannot, like, skip deep conditioning. Um, and, like, it, it can be something simple. They have the little packets in Walmart, the conditioner packages. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, you just buy 10 of them. They're, like, what, 99 cents? Right, no, last what, 10 weeks. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah that'll last you 10 weeks, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and you just do one every week. And yeah, that would that's that's that would be mine. Yeah, deep conditioning is so beneficial, like just with growth and um less shedding. And also what recently what I learned really helps um with cleansing your hair and less shedding is pre-pooing. I was not a pre poo yes. person, let me tell you, because that adds a whole nother step to why <laughs> it's already long, okay? But pre pooing and like adding moisture to your hair before you even step in the shower and shampoo, because shampoo sometimes it well it depends on what shampoo you use, but it'll strip your hair. Mm -hmm. So when you add in moisture before, your hair is already hydrated and it's easier to detangle and cleanse and just just makes the whole wash day process easier. Yeah. You would think it would slow you down, but for me, it just makes it quicker. Yeah. I mean, an easy pre poo thing is like coconut oil. Just putting yes. coconut oil before the shampoo, so much mm -hmm. easier than, yeah, yeah, I love coconut oil. I know everybody's sick of hearing about coconut oil, but I love <laughs> coconut oil. Love it. Coconut, look, coconut oil has its, <laughs> has its good moments. It has its good moments. <laughs> um... I guess next would be following a wash routine. So in the beginning of my natural hair journey, I kind of just stuck to the same thing and did the same routine over and over and over and over. One, because I was afraid to venture out just because I don't know what it's going to look like if I switch up this routine. And um, two, it just helps you like learn your hair. And if you're doing the same routine over and over, you kind of get a feel for 
you just learn more about your hair and how it's going to react to the products that you already use. So following a wash routine also helps with growth, um, less shedding, your hair already knows what to expect, uh, low manipulation. So yeah, follow a good wash routine. Um, of course, try out new hairstyles, but don't be doing all type of extra, trying 10,000 different products in one month. It's just, you're not gonna see any benefit from that. You know what I'm saying? So the next one um, is no expectations or assumptions. And this is, for me, like when I wrote this down, it was kind of, I was thinking about long-term, but then I also thought about short-term as well. So expectations long-term were like, oh my gosh, okay, let me take care of my hair now so that when I'm like, so in a few years, you know, I'll have this big old pretty afro and like pretty curls down my back, touching my butt. That is not reality, okay? You have to go into your natural hair journey wanting healthy hair. You can't go in being like, oh, I want to go natural because I want to have long curly hair. Because reality is, it's probably not going to be that way. Um, you don't know what your hair is going to look like in two to three years. Your hair is constantly changing and evolving. And if when I started my natural hair journey, I thought by now, what well, I've been, what, like five years in, I would have thought by now I would have had, like, curls down in my boobs. Like, you couldn't tell me I wouldn't have had a big old afro looking like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Extra popping, like, length, all of that. But, you know, there's so many things that happen in your hair journey that can set you back. Um, you might decide to color your hair and then, you know what I'm saying? That sets you back and then you're further, <laughs> you're further from your hair goals now. And that's like a whole year of growth gone because you decided to bleach your hair one night and then it just went downhill from there. So, you know, your natural hair journey is going to be up and down, up and down. Don't have any expectations of how your hair is going to look in a few years or even in a few months. Just take it week by week, day by day, and just make sure you're taking care of your hair, honestly. And also with having expectations for hairstyles and how they're going to come out, your hair, it's so hard to get your hair to look the same. For a second Every time, time. Yep. it's like once you get your hair like that one time and you try to do it again, your hair is just gonna be like sis, you thought. No. <laughs> so just don't have any expectations or assumptions. Just be open and free, and you know what I'm saying. Be confident with whatever the outcome is gonna be. Um, and I would just say like for even my personal experience, from my personal experience, I did a big chop or big chop because I kind of grew my hair out for a while. In 2017 or 2016, like I cut off all my hair and like I was fully natural. I remember mm -hmm. and just kept dyeing my hair. It was red, <laughs> it was blonde and red. Like it was just a whole thing. And Wait, um, might I add, it looked good too, girl. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> and... I mean, now I'm here again. I've cut it off again. It was like this short, but you know, it's growing back now. Um, but I still bleached it. So obviously like the growth is a little stunted because I still have to, you know, when you bleach your hair, you have to continuously trim it. Um, so to get rid of the dead ends. So I mean, it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just say be patient. Just like be patient with your hair. Like it will grow. Um, and like, you're not always going to remember to put on your bonnet and you're not always gonna, you know, pre-poo, but <laughs> patient. Yeah. Yes. Patience. Patience is key because, oh, I know we all had those days where we just ready to shave it all off. Okay. I'm just done. Like, yeah. even now, even today, like, I still be like, look, you could go. You could really go. <laughs> Um, so next I have confidence. Um, I know at the beginning of my natural hair journey, um, I was like one of the only people that I saw wearing natural hair. So I didn't see anyone else like, you know, looking or whose hair was looking like mine. Um, I went to, well, my high school was sort of 50, 50. So I had 50% white, 50% black. Um, but it was in a more predominantly white area and I, natural hair just was not like, 
unless you like light skin with like pretty curled curly hair no none of the brown girls or darker girls really wore their natural hair like that it was all um, either relaxed or straightened or just manipulated in some way to where it wasn't their natural curl pattern so me having to navigate high school now with my little puff <laughs> and just not feeling as pretty or not really being like the girl that all the guys are like oh my god yeah she a baddie etc etc I'm kind of just had to get through that on my own and just learn to love my hair and you know what I'm saying now people are like girl I should have went natural with you in high school and I'm like that ain't none of my business (laughs) But yeah, it takes a lot of confidence, um, especially when you don't know what to do with your hair or how to style it at such a young age. And um, you don't really have, um, unless you're like, you have a part-time job in high school, you don't really have money to go and get all kinds of different hair products, et cetera, et cetera. So just trying to learn how to do it on your own and be confident and feel good because when you look good, you feel good. So have confidence, hang in there. You got this, okay? And we are going to have beautiful flourishing curls and kinks yeah i mean i could really talk for hours about the things that people have said to me about my curls about how you know my hair used to look better when it was straight or just claiming like that it looks better when it was straight or when Mm -hmm. it is straight and i mean the list goes on yeah yeah (laughs) precisely the list goes on and on but i just it's important to know nobody there's no such thing as pretty hair or nice hair nice hair is healthy hair um and i just i really can't stand it when people are like oh you know you should have get you know my mommy's half chinese you should have get your mommy's hair because you know her curls are very loose and like you know when her hair is blowed out it's like long and flowy um because what 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 do you want me to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, well I don't. So so what now? <laughs> you share this information because no, I, actually I remember um in high school one of my close friends she actually recommended that I voluntarily give myself heat damage to loosen my curl pattern. Because you know like the crown of your head is like a little bit more coarse and mm-hmm, thicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was like, well, if you straighten it a little bit more, your curl pattern might just get a little bit looser and a little bit wavier. I was like, definitely not doing that. <laughs> but um, thanks for the advice. Yeah. So, yeah, people definitely, there's no such thing as pretty hair or a texture that's better than the other. I think truly beautiful hair. Oh my gosh, I have been so envious of some 4C tech, like, y'all, 4C hair is so gorgeous. Like, it's been times where I'm like, I wish my hair was that thick. Like, I wish I had those kinks because it just looks so bomb. And, like, the hairstyles that they can do with it when it's that thick, it's like, I can't do that. My hair is, is, is too thin for that. It, it's thick, but it's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, like, 4C, it just holds, for me, I don't know, it just holds weight, Okay. So you can do like all these pretty braided hairstyles and these crown hairstyles and these flat twists and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Healthy hair is beautiful hair. There's no such thing as a good hair type. The last thing is there are resources to help you with your natural hair journey. Um, so of course, like this podcast, we're here just trying to help people get through their natural hair journey and the start of it. And um, like I said, when I was first starting out being natural, I was on YouTube. I watched a lot of mahogany curls because we had similar textures. Um, I never really watched anybody who had a different texture from me just because how is that? It's, it's, you can watch it just for like entertainment purposes, but I it's not going to work on my hair because I don't have that hair texture. So mm-hmm. mahogany curls, she was like my OG go-to girl. And I pretty much learned how to take care of my hair from then on. And yeah. And then I became a resource myself. (laughs) And now I'm out here trying to educate and help people just wear their natural hair, 
and be confident in teaching hairstyles and how to care for it, how to wash it, um, what to do on wash day, all that good stuff. So, yes. <laughs> all right. So, Anna, how do you maintain your hair during quarantine? What has been your routine or what have you been doing to just keep your curls popping or not popping? <laughs> well, to be honest, my hair has been out <laughs> just like this. Um, still wash my hair pretty frequently. I've been deep conditioning a lot, but most of the time it's just out like this. Um, and I do a lot of like when I can't be bothered and like I don't want to wake up. Like if I wash my hair in the night and I don't want to wake up with my hair like out here. I will like pluck up my hair, braid, braid my hair, um, <laughs> just into like five or six, and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, man. I have to do my hair like as soon as I step out the shower. <laughs> as soon as I step out the shower, I have to do my hair. It will be not steady, okay? Um, but during quarantine. Um, I've been doing my quarantine wash day series, so I've actually been doing like my regular braid outs, um, twist outs, wash and goes. I've been doing a lot of stuff that's low maintenance. Um, I haven't been doing any protective styles, um, no feed in hairstyles, nothing that's going to be too much tension on my scalp. Everything has been very loose, very free, just wearing my hair out, um, letting my hair get old throughout the week, and then, of course, having my weekly wash days. So that's what I've been doing during quarantine. I wish I could just, if I didn't have to make YouTube videos, um, <laughs> I would have my hair in some chunky twists for days and days <laughs> and days and days. And I think also just not having anywhere to go, I can leave my hair up in a ponytail or a pineapple inside of a bonnet all day, every day, until I hop on camera and unleash whatever's under there. <laughs> so, yeah, quarantine's just been more of a chill approach. Um, there's no one to see. So I hope everyone out there is genuinely trying new stuff on their hair because no one's going to see it. And taking good care of your hair and not, you know, m messing all up in it. So now we're going to get into our favorite products, our must-have products that we always use for our hair. And just our holy grail products that we know that our natural hair loves. So, yes, Anna, take yeah. it away. So my go-to number one, I know for a fact that it will always work, always in my hair soft. Shea Moisture's um, Curl Enhancing Smoothie. It's the um, Jamaican Black Castor Oil? Leave-In too. That one is yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. That product was the first product I ever used on my natural hair, the first time it curled up. And ever since then, it has been my ride or die, my OG. So, yeah, that's my number one go-to. My absolute favorite conditioner. Let me do conditioner. My favorite conditioner is Uncle Funky's daughter. I actually have it with me. <laughs> my favorite conditioner is Uncle Funky's daughter's Richie Rich conditioner. Now, this conditioner is crack in a bottle. Okay? Let me tell you why this is my favorite. When I put this conditioner on my hair I instantly feel like my hair is in a cloud like it just smooths out everything the slip is I've never seen a slip like this in a conditioner in my entire life okay I'm really like I'm really selling this right now because this conditioner is amazing y'all like if I could only use this, I would style my hair with this conditioner. I just need to do a video like that where I just leave the conditioner on and just be. Because I feel like I, I don't even want to rinse it out when it's time to rinse it out. Like, that is how much I love this conditioner. You ease to detail. Let me, let me see it. <laughs> if your hair gets, like, knotted um, or gets, like, really tangled up, 
this will unleash those knots and tangles. Like, this is amazing. It has amazing slip. Like, the best mm -hmm. slip ever. So, yes, this is my favorite product. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely, um, when I post this on my blog, I'm definitely going to put the info for all of these, all of, like, our go-to products and stuff because I know that a lot of people have been asking me about mm -hmm. products for, you know, their younger kids with, like, really tight curls. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just difficult to comb out um, younger kids' hair because, you know, mm -hmm. their scalp is tender. Like, don't um, touch me, and they're trying to run away and squirm away. Yep, yep. Yeah. And so having a product with, like, a whole lot of slip is, is really important. Yeah. So I recently tried TGIN's leave-in conditioner. Yeah. Um, which one is it? Does it have green tea in it? Maybe it's that one. I think it's um, green tea. Yeah, it's so, so nice. It makes my hair so soft. Like, I don't even um, need to use, like, a curl, curl cream or curl pudding necessarily when I use it. Mm -hmm. I just use it and add some gel, and I'm good to go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Come through with TG. I actually just tried them for the first time in my quarantine wash day series. So y'all should check it out. <laughs> um, the next product um, that I personally love is Allocate Naturals Lemongrass Leave-In Conditioner. That leave-in conditioner is like, you see results instantly. Like, as soon as you spray that leave-in on, you feel like the softness of your hair changes and it becomes like super soft <laughs> so i love products where i like instantly can feel and see a change as soon as i apply it and that's one of those products so that's a really moisturizing and hydrating leave-in conditioner another styling product miss jessie's pillow soft curl oh i love it mm -hmm. um and her that entire line multicultural curls um and what's up with the other ones in the two bottles oh my gosh i love them and the pillow soft curls sometimes you want your hair to have a hole but sometimes you want it to just bounce and just be soft and pillow soft curls is just perfect for that love it yeah i've heard of that before too i've never tried it i've tried a few miss jessie's but i haven't tried that one and i need to get back into it mm -hmm. i need to get back into it um, one product that I love for styling is Talia Wajid. I'm going to say her last name right. Talia Wajid Apple and Aloe Curl Defining Cream. And, um, you can use it for a wash and go twist outs, but my favorite is for a braid out. Y'all know, I, I, I'm a braid out girl. I love doing braid outs and I get perfect results every time when I use, well, not every time. Natural hair is unpredictable, but I get good results when I use the apple and aloe curl defining cream. That is really nice. Good holds, um, hydrating, a nice thick cream. Yeah. So I actually recently just bought that cream. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. girl. And it is really amazing for braid outs um, and twist outs and stuff like that. So um okay go to product gel eco styler gel um black castor oil yes eco styler gel um i usually can't just put on one product without adding gel like i can't my it just won't work yeah um for my hair so that's important gel yes gel oh, when you said that black castor oil eco styler gel <laughs> i felt that in my soul okay <laughs> that is also one of my that's like my go-to gel i know i use I, i've done a lot of videos using the olive oil eco styler but i need to do a lot more than the black castor oil because that's what my hair loves the most i don't know why it's like that but it is that that one's just a little bit more hydrating to me, a little bit more moisturizing and less of a crunch. So the last products that I want to mention are African Pride products. And the first one is the pre-shampoo and also the five essential oils. And the pre-shampoo was the first pre-shampoo that I actually used. And I just fell in love like off the first time of using it. 
Um, I will forever use that pre-shampoo for the rest of my life. I will marry that pre-shampoo because <laughs> who told them to do that? Like, that was disrespectful. How they going to put that in a jar and sell it for $5? But anyways, <laughs> um, and the five essential oils is amazing, y'all. It's it's everything. Like, if you if you want a bunch of oils, just go buy that one product because it has grapeseed oil, coconut oil, um, castor oil, olive oil, and argan oil. That's five oils in one jar. So that just covers all my bases. Like you covered all my needs. And like the scent is like a really nice light grape scent. So your hair just looks all shiny and bouncy and it smells delightful. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I have one. I have one. I forgot. I almost forgot. So there is this ancient product that... <laughs> Um, I used to use in 2014, maybe. Uh -huh. Um, and it's called Grow Out, as in G R O A U T. And it's mm. uh, yes, and it is an oil, and it has biotin, lavender, like all of the all of the things that you need in your mm. hair to make it grow. It is like magic. Um. Mm -hmm. If you go look it up on YouTube, you'll probably see a bunch of videos from like 10 years ago. Um, but they're still selling it, obviously. Um, is the is the brand YouTube. called is the is that the brand name? Yeah, it's called okay. Grow Out Solutions. Okay. Um, and I have a blog post about it on my blog. Check it out. Check it out, y'all. Mm. Check it out. Um, check it out. <laughs> so yeah. I need to try that. Grow Out Solutions. Do you find that you get it from like a um, beauty supply? You can get it from Amazon, or you can get it from their website. Uh, you maybe can find it in these supply stores, but I just bought mine online. Okay. So, um, this concludes our little podcast episode. Um, but if you guys want to know anything, we are down to come back on here and talk again. Comment below if there's anything specific you guys want to ask us. Um... It could be anything, literally anything personal. It could be, um, well, not too personal. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it could be any hair-related questions. If you're having hair problems, we can try our best to sort of uh, recommend something. We aren't hairstylists, but we do do our own hair, and that's how we help you guys. And that's honestly how most natural hair influencers work, um, is just demonstrating on their own hair and recommending what works for them to you guys. So uh, definitely comment below. Let us know if you like this episode. You know what or I'm saying? Or if you want tell to us see we look on pretty. IG Live. Or tell us we look pretty. <laughs> tell us we look pretty. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we can do an IG Live question and answer. So yes, this is not the last of us. Um, yeah, and if you have not already, subscribe to my blog, anomaly.com. Link is in my bio. Yes, so subscribe to her blog. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, um, we would like to say shout out Skype because we were really there trying to use other mediums to record this podcast. <laughs> and it was like, oh, you have to have a business account, this, that, and the third. And then we were like, what about Skype? And then we were like, oh, we haven't used Skype in so long. How are we going to like? And we finally managed to sign in. And Skype ended up being the real OG. So shout out Skype. So shout out to Skype for having free recording. Unlike Zoom and whatever else is out there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our Back to Basics. Now